Well, thanks a lot for staying with us here on Sunrise Live on Eon this Monday morning. Now, the Parliament of South Africa, South Africa's legislature, as well as under the country's current constitution, it composes of the National Assembly and the National Council of Provinces. So lately, it seems as though uh, chaos has resigned to Supreme with attacks and starts screaming heckles, just to name just but a few. So this morning, we'll be discussing those issues and more in terms of Parliament, as well as a parliamentary education program and the campaign that will be rolled out uh, for now. So to talk more more about the matter. We are joined in studio by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Baleka Mbet. And of course, we remind you that you can be part of our conversation. Remember that number is 011-447-1620. Alternatively, leave your comments on our Facebook as well as on our Twitter pages, and uh, we'll be sure to shield uh, some of those uh, questions that you have for the Speaker. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I can imagine it's early mornings for you. Well, it's got to be done. So here we are. You are also up early. Yeah, but it's part of the job. You see, you get paid to do exactly. this. Exactly. <laughs> so somebody has to do it. So here we are. Well, it's you and me that are going to be doing it. Uh, you know, Speaker, it's just, it's so great to have you in studio. And the reason why is because some of the questions that we'll be posing are some of the questions that, that members of South Africa are genuinely asking. And I'm sure you'd appreciate that, especially given the State of the Nation address and how matters unfolded within mm. uh, uh, the, the, the National Assembly in itself. In fact, uh, with the President uh, during his closing in the debate uh, saying that, you know, uh, and I quote, that some MPs have decided to treat the August House like something worse than a beer hall. So then the question to you is that do you feel that as though control is being lost within the National Assembly, within Parliament, in terms of parliamentary proceedings? I think uh, what's happened is that in the fifth Parliament, because remember, we've been part of this uh, since 1994, mm. uh, and things have been going differently in the first four Parliaments. Yeah. In the fifth Parliament, there's a difference in who is in Parliament. There's a difference in attitude, there's a, a difference in approach to the whole question of decorum, uh, the question of how you cooperate and all of you, in fact, mutually respect where you are, mm. the role you play, and in fact, conduct yourselves in a particular way. So that's the difference within the fifth parliament. Because remember, we've been there since 1994. Yeah. And this has never been until a group of MPs arrived and they declared from the word go that we're not here to respect protocols, conventions, rules. We don't care about that. And it's somehow now that it sounds like South Africans are beginning to sit up and realize that something is different. Mm. And I mean, with the differences thereof, one would say that perhaps the way that you respond to these differences is to become more innovative. However, when we look at the footage that was uh, present during the State of the Nation address, and I'm going to be honest, we're going to have an honest conversation, sure, you and I, this morning. Sure, that's what because it's about. You know, mm. when we were watching this, and I was watching this as the member, as a member of this country, as a citizen of this country, and, and to see, and I mean, Here's the footage that is on the screen right now. To see a woman, for example, who's, who was beating up some of the, the members of parliament, as a South African, not as a member of parliament, as a South African, it looks as though those MPs are the victims and not necessarily the ones who are the instigators. When you see footage like that in the media, it looks as though parliament is the one that is guilty of really hurting and violating certain constituencies. So how then do we respond to images such as this? I would see it differently. Mm. If you had been looking at when it started, how long it took to try and reason with the honorable members, mm. and we call them honorable members because that's how we would like it to be. Yeah. If you look at, in fact, the rules that govern any sitting, if you look specifically at what that particular joint sitting where the country received the state of the nation address. Mm. If you look at the sum total of all those things, and you look at how much else could have been done without actually removing what clearly had presented itself as an obstacle to progress to the business of the day being entertained, then you know that there was no other option because you ask people who clearly don't intend cooperating, who have done all they can to be as disruptive and as uh, rude as possible, 
And when you say to them, okay, clearly you don't want to be with us here in this particular business of the day. Yeah. Do you mind leaving the chamber then so that the rest of us can proceed? Because, you know, you can have your right to whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, but your right is not supposed to limit other people's right to get on with what they have come to do in the house. So by the time you remove them, it is because there's nothing else that can be done. Everything else has been tried. Yeah. And in fact, there is... You've basically reached the point of no return. Iman, we do see your call from KZN. I must ask you that. Or do you think, and various MPs have accused of being biased towards the African National Congress or members of the African National Congress who are in Parliament, in your view, are you biased and do you conduct yourself in a biased manner? In my view, I am not biased. Mm -hmm. I do what needs to be done at a particular moment. When we're looking at uh, some of the findings, especially when it comes to parliamentary proceedings, especially when it comes to the brawl, and, and it's one thing to speak about the, the push and pull that's going on in, to, in, in parliament, but the education campaign that comes in as a result of this, what is the purpose of it really? Because when we're looking at it, we don't understand what's going on, we just see a whole lot of violence. You know, first of all, we go all out ahead of a state of the nation address to sensitize the public, indicate to them the nature of that specific sitting. Mm. The sauna is a sitting called upon by the head of state, asking for an opportunity to present to the nation the report about the, fa the, the previous 12 months, yeah. whereby he can indicate challenges, but he can also or, or she in the future, by the way, uh, can also indicate what the plans are to improve on things that have not been improved on or mm -hmm. have not been achieved. So it's a very specific sitting that is for that particular intention. Do you still believe as a result of that, that when the, and, and I'm gonna say this because we've had analysts sitting on the very same chair that you're sitting. Mm. So when the call was made by the opposition, the Democratic Alliance to take a moment of silence, 30 seconds it was, to, to acknowledge the lives of those that, they lost their lives, those mentally ill patients that lost their lives from SED many to the 27 sure. NGOs. And they requested a 30 second moment of silence. Do you still say today, because if you're analysts saying that because the call was made from the opposition party, you did not take that into account. Do you still say that was not the moment for that moment of silence? It was not the moment and that was not the way to do it. Mm. And the chief whip of the Democratic Alliance knows this. But because SONA is an, a sitting that is watched by the whole nation, by the whole world, they see it as a moment to actually have your best PR. So in other words, political grandstanding. Know, political grandstanding. Okay. You know, you, they came with flags. I mean, the SET many people died months ago, but they plan for this specific occasion, mm. abusing the deaths of our people to just try and, and, and grab the moment well, and grab their attention. We're going to speak further about that. It appears as though it's not against the political party. In other words, the behavior of the EFF towards uh, the, the, the National Assembly or even the opposition party, any member of the opposition, but it's towards one individual. Then that's the president of the Republic of South Africa. So it was there any other way of handling it, even though the president was the one that was there to, to was a member of, of, of that special seating. So what other way could there have been to tackle that issue effectively? If honorable members or a member of parliament would like to raise the issue of the president, actually there are procedures and they know how to do it. There are structures, there are bodies in parliament. Mm. Each party is represented in a forum called the Chief Whips Forum that meets every week. Yeah. They meet there to talk about things, to complain to each other, to agree ways of dealing with matters. Which is why, even on the issue of the SET many, I'm saying the chief whip of the uh, of official opposition didn't actually do what he should have done because he should have alerted us ahead of time, we would have engaged, we would have, would have dealt with the issue, would have either agreed and disagreed, they would have said that, mm -hmm. okay, we will go ahead even though you are not uh, you know, giving us the permission. So there was no other way 
that sitting is a sitting. Even yeah. if FW de Klerk was the head of state, that sitting is a sitting for him to deliver the state of the nation at 